So when it comes to forms with Inertia.js, it's important to remember that Inertia keeps us within a single page application environment. So we don't want to do a normal HTML based form submission because that's going to cause a full cycle refresh, taking us out of that single page application environment completely. However, it's also perfectly possible that we will want to redirect or update some or all items on a page after a form submission as part of the response. So to aid with this, Inertia.js has its own form submission process that will ultimately submit our forms using asynchronous HTTP requests, similar to a typical view based form flow where we would kick off a request with something like fetch or Axios, and it's going to utilize the response to update our page accordingly. So Inertia provides its own module called Inertia that we can import from Inertia.js slash Inertia, and we can utilize it very similarly to something like Axios where we just simply call inertia.post put, patch, or delete the URL and then any payload and configuration that we need to make to the actual request in itself therein. So with this particular form approach, everything looks very view based. Nothing here is different from your typical view application. It's just what we're using to actually kick off the request is just from inertia. On the server side, that's where the change really happens. So instead of treating this post user's endpoint here as an API response, we're going to want to treat this like a normal server based response as though we were rendering this back using something like edge. So on the server side, we really don't need to treat this like an API at all. Whereas on the view side, we're treating it just like an API. And then inertia is going to kind of mend the two together to make the process very seamless for us. So let's go ahead and recreate this using our registration form here. So remember that we are using Nav UI and it does have auto component registration on there for us. So we can just add our form here. Let's do at submit prevent equals submit do our end form and then let's add a an input type here will be email the model dot value will be form dot email once we get around to that and then we'll just add a placeholder on here of email so that we know what this particular form is and let's also add a margin bottom of three. I'm also going to put a max with a small on the form in itself. So let's copy this input, paste it in here, and switch everything email to password. And lastly, let's add in a submit button. So end button, ATTR type equals submit, and we'll say register there. Okay, so now we need a submit method as well as our form here. So let's go ahead and import reactive from view, and let's import inertia from at inertia.js slash inertia. Let's add in a setup method here. And let's do const form equals reactive, provide an object within here. This will be our actual form body. So we'll just have email, default that to an empty string, and password, default that to an empty string. Lastly, we'll do const submit. Let's actually make this an async function. And let's await inertia.post. And we'll make the endpoint for this slash app slash register and provide it in our form as the body. Let's go ahead and define that route. So let's jump into our routes. Let's do route.post slash register async. And then instead of grabbing inertia here, we'll instead want to grab the request and the response. And for right now, just to scope things out, let's just console.log our body as request.body. And then let's return response redirect back. Give that a save. And let's go ahead and try it out here. Oh, right. Let's jump back into our register here and from our setup. We need to return form and submit so that we have access to it within our template. Let's give it a save. Okay, cool. Let's clear that out and let's go ahead and submit our form. So let's do test at test and then provide some password there. Hit that. And you can see our post went out and the response was a 302 found, which then redirected us to this page. If we go take a look at our server here, we have, whoops, looks like a body with an empty email and an empty password. Let's see what that might be. Let's see. I think these are supposed to be colons instead of dots. So let's give that a try here. So let's do test at test.com, something for our password. Enter that. Okay, let's take a look now at our server. There it is. Okay, so now we're getting back our email and our password. Okay, so we're not persisting anything. We're just kind of console.logging out what our body would be. But just to ensure that we are redirecting successfully and everything, let's go ahead and redirect to our app homepage. So let's switch this back with to route. I'm going to start giving our routes here names. So let's do as app within there as register.store there as register.show as login.show and as index. 
So to route app.index, give that a save. Let's go ahead and try to kick this off one more time. And there you go, we got redirected back to our welcome page. So now we know that this is working okay. While we're on the topic of redirects, I do want to note that, let's jump into the documentation real quick and head over to the redirects page. If you are doing a put patch or delete request, in order to properly redirect to the page that you're wanting to redirect to, you'll need to explicitly set the status of the response to 303. And you can do that simply by calling the status method before you actually redirect. So if you wanna do this with your posts too, that will work just fine. So we can go back in here, register, test.test.com, provide something there, hit submit, and you can see we got redirected just fine. I'm gonna leave it off of here just so that you know it's not needed. Uh, and we'll run into it a little bit later on so that there will be some examples of its usage within this application. Okay, so this is one approach that we can utilize with forms is using it just kind of like a normal Vue.js based application here, using inertia as our actual communication pipeline between our server and our form submissions. Alternatively here, inertia does come with a full form helper that we can kind of strip some of this boilerplate code out and just use the form helper in itself. So we'll leave our register form like this. What I will do is copy all of this, paste it over into our login page. Let's update this to login and we'll refactor this login page to use the inertia form helper instead of this inertia module here. So let's get rid of this import altogether and instead let's import use form from at inertia JS inertia and we do want to target the view three specific package. Additionally, we can go ahead and get rid of reactive from view because the use form method will take care of that for us. Lastly, we can also get rid of our submit method altogether because we will not need it. So what we want to do is replace reactive here with use form. Nothing else there needs to change. Scroll up to our template, get rid of our submit method, and instead do form.post slash at slash register. And what this will do is it will actually grab the body off of the form in itself from our use form method. So it will still use this as our payload, but it will take care of all of the rest of the cycle here for us. So it will kick off the request. Additionally, it will also handle back errors for us, which we'll take a look at error handling in the next lesson. And let's go ahead and give it a test as well. So let's jump into our login page here. It's going to look fairly similar. The only difference will be the login header here. And let's do test at test.com something there for a password, hit login, and we got redirected to our welcome page. We got redirected to our welcome page. We didn't, we forgot to create the route though. So I think what happened there, yep, I wrote register. That needs to be login and let's head into our routes. Let's head up to login here and let's do route.post, login, async, let's grab the request, let's grab the response, as login.store, console.log, Let's do login body here, just so that we know what request this actually came from. Return response dot redirect to route app dot index. And let's change this one here to register body. Okay, let's jump back into our application here, go back over into login and retest this with the actual login path. So test at test.com. And there we go. Let's take a look at the console.log here and you can see login body. We got the email, we got the password, so that's working a-okay. And so in the next lesson, we will add validation to this, and then we'll cover how to actually display validation errors within our form in itself. 